All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. And today I have Sharon Sananda Kamara with me. Welcome. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, Elisa. I'm doing very well. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm super excited because we're going to talk about, um, and I have not been telling people that the last two interviews that I uploaded in the channel were actually chapters in this new book that's called Death, a Compilation of Transformative Near-Death Experiences. And so each person is like a different chapter in the book, which also is on Amazon, and I was not aware of this either. So um, I, I am excited about this because um it's it's the 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 fact that we are all going through these experiences not we but you guys and you're sharing with us it's a huge help for the rest of humanity to grow from so i am super grateful and thankful that you guys take time out of your schedule to share your experiences Oh, well, thank you for saying that. I will say it took me about 20 years to actually share it publicly. It did the the uh, transformative experience in 2001 was, um, uh, it was hard for me to talk about it. And I didn't remember it right away. I remembered bits and pieces, but it took me a couple of years to put it together and understand it. And then because it was so profound for me, and so out of this world, <laughs> literally, that uh, it took me a while to be able to share it. Uh, oh, about 20 years. And I'm, you know, it's an honor to be part of this book when Amira May, uh, the Near Death Institute, who started this compilation book and started this project, and she reached out to all of us. Uh, there's 14, 14 authors, 14 chapters who have had really awesome uh, near death experiences, transformative experiences and um yeah i agree with you that people are starting to talk about it i mean near-death experiences are very popular now as you <laughs> as you can know as you know and that's a good thing because people will want to know what happens when we die we're not really taught in western society and western uh, belief systems really how to die yeah yeah absolutely well, yeah. what's so interesting about yours is that you were not religious before this happened. So um, it's 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 very interesting, you know, so let's get started and just tell us about and just so for people to know that you have two NDEs, but we're going to talk about the one that happened, not uh, the most recent one, uh, yeah. which is the one that's in the book. And so go ahead and tell us your sure. journey. <laughs> okay yes well again this was in 2001 i lived in san antonio texas i'm now in oregon back home uh, and in san antonio texas oh, my girlfriends and i wanted to go tubing down the guadalupe river in uh, new braunfels texas <clears throat> so we we all gathered there it was a friend's birthday a girlfriend there was five of us it was her birthday and we went tubing we had a really good time we uh, ended the day and it was time to get on the shuttle bus to go back to the outrigger to get our cars and go home. The um, The bus came to pick us up and it was pulling a trailer that was full of our ice chests and our uh, inner tubes. And there was people on the bus. It was a small school bus. And I started, I was the first in my group, I started to get on the bus and the, the bus was full. And so I started, I turned around to get back off and there was people, my friends and other people saying, oh, go ahead, go ahead. It's only a couple of miles, go pack the bus. And the people in the bus were saying, come on, come on back here. So I climbed on, we all climbed on and the bus was packed. And it was um, the driver, um, young guy was uh, shifting because it was four on the floor transmission, you know, manual transmission. And as he's shifting, it, the the bus is jerking back and forth, and I, we're all jerking back and forth. And when he's pulling away from a light, uh, the he shifts into second and third. And as he's shifting, I'm jerking, and I 
I am thrown up against the back door, the emergency exit door. And that pops open and I fall out and he's going about 25 miles an hour and I fall out the back of the bus. And I remember thinking, I can't believe I'm falling out of this bus. <laughs> so I'm, I mean, everything just slowed down. It just slowed down. And uh, I fall out. I hit my back on the trailer hitch, bounce off of that and bounce onto my back underneath the trailer that the bus is pulling. And he doesn't know I've fallen out yet. And I, and I um, bounce onto my side. I remember every bounce. It was in slow motion. <clears throat> and and as I bounce onto my side, I scream in my head. I obviously knew what was going to happen. I scream in my head, stop, you're killing me. <laughs> Not knowing if he's going to hear me, but I just, that was what I was screaming. And as soon as I scream that, the tire, the back tire of the trailer runs over my neck and my head. And at that point, I pop out of my, through my head, out of my body. And I feel this peace, this peace, this acceptance. I wasn't in shock. I just knew that that was going to happen as soon as, if he didn't stop, I knew that was going to happen, obviously. And I'm looking down, I'm looking down at my body in the, in the middle of the road and I think, oh, okay, well, I just died. <laughs> I died. I've done it many times before. I wasn't fearful or anything like that. It was acceptance. And I knew I had done it before. And this was just part of the deal. And I saw a commuter bus coming because he was still driving down the road. And I saw a commuter bu bus driving up to where I was laying in the road. And I thought, I hope that bus doesn't run over my body because that would make a big mess you know but I wasn't I was just matter of fact with it yeah and I also thought gosh this is really going to ruin the day for my friends <laughs> we <laughs> had such an awesome day right <laughs> and here I go and die on them oh this is going to be awful for them they're you know my friends is gonna not going to be able to celebrate her birthday you know without thinking about this blah 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 how old were that. you I was uh well, it was in 2001, so I was 40, 42, 40, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 42, yeah. And um, and so I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking all these things. So I was an adult. Um, and as I'm, as I'm thinking these, I also think about my ex-partner, my partner at the time. Oh, you know, he'll be sad, but he'll be fine. And I see him in that space of he'll be fine everything will be fine he'll get you know he'll get over it and then I think about my sister home really close to and she has a family she has kids and and um at that point she had her kids and her husband and I think well she'll be really sad but she'll get over it and I'm thinking these thoughts and then I think about my mom who was still on the earth plane and my stepfather who I was really close to had died in 98 and that was a big deal for me that's when I really started wondering I was I didn't mention I was raised Catholic but I was not a good Catholic and I was not religious at all. And my parents weren't religious. My grandmother was uh, fundamental, but um, I needed to know what happens when we die, when my stepfather died, because that was a big deal. I never lost anyone close to me. And so my mother, uh, she was still on, she was still living at that point on the earth plane and when I was thinking about my mom and I lived close to her and I was taking care of her, basically, um, even though she lived by herself, I basically took care of her. And as I was thinking about my mom, I felt a presence behind me and I turned around. And it was my stepdad. And I was really happy to see him. I had already started having out of body experiences before this. OK, uh, spontaneous when my stepfather passed and I and I became I became a. Uh, a traveler on my own by studying it, which I didn't know at that time anything about it, but that's a whole other story. But anyway, <laughs> so my stepdad was there and I turned and uh, saw him and he told me, the first thing he told me was, it's not your time. And I said, what do you mean it's not my time? And I kind of basically argue with him and I said, but I want to stay with you. Right? And we, he was telling me that my mother needed me and there was things I still needed to do that I hadn't finished doing. And he told me um, things about my mom that I would help her transition and she would transition not too long. And that I needed, I needed to help her. And cause she was um, in, 
uh, it, her health was not that good. So, uh, and that, that did happen. And as he's, as we're communicating telepathically, I feel movement. I sense movement to our, my right again, and there's a portal or a tunnel that opens up. And I recognize it as the, what I call the ancestral tunnel. And I see my ancestors there in within, and I'm drawn to it. And he tells me again, it's not your time, my stepdad. And I recognize ancestors that I know from on the earth plane here that I knew in life and other ancestors that I didn't, wouldn't have recognized here, but I knew that they were my ancestors there. And I noticed that they're not real happy to see me. They're not smiling and celebrating. I was obviously expecting that, knowing that I had done this before. And I'm beginning to think, okay, well, <laughs> you know, maybe this isn't a welcome home type of thing. And as that, as I'm being drawn toward that tunnel, I see another portal off in the distance from this one. And it's like, it's like a sun that appears. It's golden white. And I'm drawn to that. My attention is drawn to that and it gets larger and larger. I see a figure move out from, from that portal, from that sun like portal. And he's moving out and he's wearing the white robe and I long hair and I recognize him right away as Jesus, who I call Yeshua. And, um, and I recognize him and I fly to him. I just fly to him. I missed him. I realized at that moment, I missed him so bad. I was a partier. I, I, um, didn't really, I wasn't spiritual. I wasn't religious. I knew there was some kind of higher power that must be watching over me. God, whatever you want to call it, because I got myself into some crazy experiences, you know, and things like that. Um, and I was always taken care of, but I, I didn't believe that in, I was taught, you know, that we had to go through certain priests or whatever to get to hire, you know, the saints and things yep. like that, that we didn't, you know, so that just didn't resonate with me. And, but I knew Jesus was real. I knew that he really walked the planet. And I also knew in my heart, in my soul that he was different much different and he was human like us you know what i mean and and he had his stuff that he went through when he was on the planet and there was a lot that i felt that that wasn't shared about him that i felt was true so so i flew to him and he embraced me we embraced he uh and he tells me the first thing he says to me telepathically is it's not your time all right <laughs> And I'm like, but I want to stay with you. I want to stay here. I want to stay. I want to stay home. I want to be with you. And, um, and he laughs and his laughter, I mean, it's just the most amazing sound ever. And, <laughs> and at that moment, he, he, he picks up my chin to look up at him. He's taller than me. And he, I look in his eyes and it, his eyes were bright or bright blue as I saw them bright blue and they held the universe they held the light of the universe they held the the universe God's energy I can't express it but as he's as I look in his eyes I see I feel a my he's filling me up with light of the universe, the light of God. And I'm reflecting that back to him. We're actually merging. The light is merging. We are merging into, I'm merging into his light and I'm reflecting that back. So we're merging as one. Wow. At that, in, in, in that time, in that space, I felt that there wasn't anything nothing that I could do or say or think or anything like that, that would get in the way of his love for me and his caring. None of the, all of it, there was nothing there that would have gotten in the way of that. And um, that I never really, it felt like I never really left. Mm -hmm. The rest of this was a dream <laughs> that I've been here the whole time. And uh, he's, um, 
well, we're just in that space and it was tangible. Uh, it was intelligent. The, the the light is intelligent. It's tangible. It's, it's, um, I was filled. I was not me anymore. I was the light. I was filled with pure love and pure light. So we're in that space for, I don't know how long. Yeah. And then uh, I start to come back to the dream, I guess you could say. And <laughs> and I become Sharon again in that space. And he and I hear him, I hear his voice bringing me back. And he says, would you like to go on a journey with me? And I agree. And he, he extends his hand and I take his hand. And in that moment, I felt his hand was, there, there was something in that moment where I felt his hand just so intense being with him was so intense. Our senses in the higher planes are so much more um, uh, refined than here. And I thought about it and I think about it when, like in my travels too, it's like our senses here, are like wearing a glove over our senses compared to the higher planes, which is um, so um, more intense. And I took his hand, I could feel just so intently his lines and and, and uh, crevices in his hands and the skin and um and at the same time we we start flying through the cosmos behind you there we just start flying through the cosmos and i see the lights and the planets and i say i like to say this too because i don't know if the cosmos is moving through us or we're moving through the cosmos because you know what are yeah what are <laughs> right and uh as he's holding my hand, we're moving through, and then I see a a blue light in the distance that my attention is drawn to, and he's of course communicating this to me, I'm sure. And it's a um, like a blue portal. So we we we're drawn to it, and we move through this portal. And after we uh, emerge from the portal, I see a turquoise blue orb floating in the dark sky the darkness of, of the um of space and i realize it's a planetoid or a planet and i recognize it as a water planet and that it's a home for me and one that i'm very drawn to and part of a part of and as i recognize it we move closer i am i start to become um, the consciousness of the planet. Wow. I am merging with the consciousness of the planet. Yes. And I realize who I am as that body, that planet, that planetary body. And I have so much love and so much caring for every being, on, everything on my body that makes up my body. <laughs> right. There's so almost separate. like you, it's almost, almost like you're earth. You're the consciousness of earth and you can feel the animals and the people and the insects and the plants and the same thing, the same thing. It's just, it's this water planet. Yeah. And so I'm, and I can move my consciousness in and out from being the plant, the awareness of the planet down to an amoeba any any you know any being on the planet and i also as i move my consciousness in and out every every being on the planet has love and caring for me as a body for for the mother of the body and i also realize i have a um there's a masculine and a feminine for this planetoid the uh, of me and my counterpart and i begin to be aware of my counterpart uh, as that um planetoid and um and i felt uh that part of my soul <laughs> uh over soul whatever you want to call it i felt this longing to be with him again and i felt that his longing was just as strong as mine to be whole so it with had, him again. Okay, so it's, so it had a male and a female and a consciousness. The planet had a male and a female consciousness. Okay, got it. Yes, yes, okay. and yes, and there's this this 
this uh, longing to be one together as these planetoid or planet planetary bodies beings. Yeah. <clears throat> and as I'm remembering that or, or remembering that part of me, I felt I knew that I, my soul matrix was connected to the matrix of that planet. Okay. At some point I hear uh, Yeshua drawing me back to again from from that awareness to who I am as Sharon and we dive down onto the planet and we dive into the water. And then I'm drawn into and um, the uh, part of me that is a water being a, a um, what I would call a myrrh, okay, on that planet. And I'm reintegrated with my family. I remember my mate, I have children, uh, my parents, I'm reintroduced <laughs> to my parents and to my ancestry, my clan there. And um, and I spend time reintegrating with them. There was a time where I'm losing my awareness at Sharon and yeah. he has to call me, call me back again. And I, um, I, I told him, okay, I'll make a deal with you. <laughs> and he told me, he said, he told me that, after your mission on earth or your life plan on, on earth, you, you know, you can come here when it, well, first of all, I can come here anytime, go there anytime in my meditations, which I did, but they had to keep bringing me back because I wanted to stay, but <laughs> yeah. And I was having out about experiences there as well. I mean, I still do every once in a while, but um, I was having them very strongly then. Uh, and so so he told me that I could focus a lot of a lot of my soul energy there again or there, not again, but as because we you know we're multi-dimensional dimensional and we have aspects that are existing all over yeah. the place. Yeah. And and so I said, All right, I'll go back to Earth on one condition <laughs> that you are with me. I know consciously you are with me all the time and you were walking beside me and you were there with me and you helped me you know, through you know through the rest of um my life and uh and there you know always and he said deal and uh and that's when I was back on my in my earth body in the middle of the road and I see that bus coming and I get up and I run to the side of the road you get up I get up <laughs> Oh yeah. my God. After he went over you, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I believe that all of that was healed my, my body. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that energy must have been off the charts going to that higher vibrational planet, you mm -hmm. know, and seeing Jesus and connecting and becoming one with Jesus, becoming one with the creator, like with God, it's like, I can't even imagine like, yeah, you probably got healed with that energy. I mean, yeah. Wow. That's the wow. only thing I, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, he, um, what oh, they did call an ambulance for me and I went to the hospital. They put me on a, uh, you know, the, um, st spine stabilizer gurney. Uh huh. And yeah. And they did x-rays and there was, there was, uh, the only thing that my hair was falling out, my, they had to glue my ear back on my ear. Part of my ear was falling off. And, uh, and I had road rash and, and I do have some nerve damage in my neck and I have back stuff that I just maintain, but nothing broken, no fractures or nothing. And, um, probably not some sense into me because, because <laughs> I, I quit partying like, like I used to, like I did then. Now, yeah. I, now I have a different, complete, completely different life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, a lot of the times that's why those things happen, right? We write them in our contracts, uh, you know, to for these things to happen if we're not on the right track or, you know, yeah. uh, or if we want to learn a specific lesson as well. So um, as you were in this planet, um, I imagine you were a mermaid where you were female, right? What you saw or were you a merman? A, a mermaid? I was female in that life. That okay. I was shown, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, did you like feel your 
like tail? Did you feel like, like, what did you feel? What did it feel like to be like swimming as a, as a mermaid, I guess? How does that feel like? Oh, it's the most freeing thing ever. It's, it's so freeing. And mm, it's, I mean, it's, it's like flying. It's just no different than flying. And I do fly in my outer bodies. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's like that. And it's just so supportive because you're supported by the ocean, you know, the water. And it's, it's amazing. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. And what did you see like the, like cities where they're like cities underwater or like, was there anything specific that you saw? that yeah like a house or a city or it was mostly caves i did see caves okay. where where we were existing in i guess you could call it yeah um i didn't i didn't see cities or anything like that where we would had housing but we would exist in um, po- i don't know pods or communities communities pods comes to mind Okay. Where we gather together in caves and things like that. A dolphin. I had a guide who was a dolphin, who was a dolphin, and he took me to a cave that um, was lined with uh, rose quartz crystal. Yeah, and that vibration was really strong. And he gave me a. Um, he was able to gift a rose quartz crystal to me to bring back with me energetically. Yeah, wow. and um, so there was a lot of crystal caves that I remember and actually uh, existing in cave type dwellings. And I had children. I had, I had babies and my body was just so strong. Wow. So strong. Did you recognize anybody in that lifetime here? Like who might be, be living with you here or you, and you're in this life with you? I didn't. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, what a, did you see any other like beings in the water, like sharks or whales or, I mean, obviously I you saw whales. Dolphins. I saw, I saw whales and dolphins. I didn't see any sharks, uh, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Right. But I saw whales. I saw quite a few whales. Yeah. Okay. So did it feel like the ocean here to you, like salty or I don't know, the mm-hmm. same consistency? Um, yeah, it, it, it was clear. It was very clear and, oh, okay. um, beautiful, you know, like the Caribbean type okay. of, uh, clear yeah. here I've been to, I used to dive, <laughs> no surprise there. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I've been to the Cayman and, um, Cancun and those types of areas where the water is just so gorgeous and clear. It was like that. Ah, yeah. So it was beautiful okay. turquoise and clear. And um, uh, warm, cool, warm, coolish, warm. Yeah. Was and, there any any land? Uh, well, the caves. There were caves. I don't remember seeing any land uh, like that we could walk of on. The water. There were rocks. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So no mountains or like land or. I don't know. Uh, Not that I saw. No. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That is so interesting. Well, I know that one of the serious, I don't know if it's serious A, B, or C, um, is a water planet. So I've heard um, that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I heard that after my experience. Yeah. I didn't know because it took me a while to be able to share that. So I'm like, you know, this is crazy. How do, <laughs> how do I tell people about this? Yeah. Well, and after you know, I started, she, yeah, the, I said you can't. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is that I I used to be a, a, a regression, past life regression hypnotist. Oh. And so I did end up moving from regular life pastimes to galactic, which are, out, you know, other planets. Right. So, right. A lot of the time I would spend on other planets with with people in their regression and it was always like you know well what were you wearing and what was this and what was that and it's just (laughs) like it's um it's very interesting to me that 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 stuff you know especially when the ndes are 
go to other planets. Like, I don't know. Do you know Elle Suramaga? Yes. Yes. Okay, she's, so, part the, um, she's part of yes, the book. Yeah. So uh -huh. Elle went to another planet as well. Right. Um, yes. And she went to a water planet. So it's just so, so, so interesting um, that um, that they show you that, you know, that's mm -hmm. just a, a, a it's, it's amazing. So you get back to this world, which is super dense, right? Because those planets, their vibration are much higher than the planets here or the right. earth here. Right. So did you feel at all that difference between how dense our planet is at all? Well, I didn't remember the experience right away. When I came oh, back to my body, I was focused on getting out of the road, <laughs> healing my body and basically dealing with what had just happened yeah. physically. Yeah. And my memories didn't start coming for a little while and I had to piece them together. Yeah. Okay. But then they started making sense because I was having strange crazy out of body experiences where I was going to a water planet. First of all, I'd wake, I just wake up out of, I'd go to sleep and wake up and I'm underwater. And first I'm like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And then I, it took me a little while to be able to remember, Oh wait, I can breathe. And I look at myself and I'm a, a mer. and it, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, I've always loved mermaids and I've always loved you know, dolphins and that, that type of thing. So it makes sense. And so I started having those experiences and remembering that way. And then in my meditations and working with Yasha, when I promised him, when he came, when I remembered him and he was showing up in my out-of-body experiences too. So this is how he was showing it to me. Uh, and he was teaching me how to get higher and how to get to through, um, through the planes. And um, in my, uh, he was showing up and in my, in my meditations is when I started remembering my childhood, which was uh, a, a violent childhood, which I didn't know because there was a lot of, there was a lot of my childhood that was blank spaces. Okay. And so those memories started coming up and I needed to heal that. And that's why I needed to come back basically was to heal what I had brought forward. And he helped me with past life, um, healing past lives that weren't healed um, in my meditations. And I promised him I would be in my room every night at 9 p.m. and meditate with him. And he took me on a really profound healing journey where I was remembering. Once I started remembering my childhood and that NDE when I was nine, I was taken back to the Galactic Wars where I remembered being in the Galactic Wars and, uh, you know, uh, being chased out of the Lyran system and uh, that type of thing is a, a Pleiadian. I was a Pleiadian in that, in that uh, memory and, uh, and seeding planets here in this system, in this star system. I remembered all that. And I remembered trauma from Atlantis. I remembered trauma from the Draco reptilians. I remembered that extraterrestrials were helping me as a child in this life as well with the, uh, with the, the violence I was dealing with in this, the, as a child was um, going through in this lifetime. So <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> wow. So I needed to, it, my psyche, in order not to go in overload, I needed to remember things incrementally. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. So how do you, how do you, I mean, without going into the details of your childhood, um, how did you heal that trauma? Like, did he show you specific steps or like, is it something that you can share or? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He helped. Well, as I was remembering it, he helped me with um, forgiveness exercises. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And as I was, he gave me a meditation to, to see the per perpetrator in my mind's eye. Okay. And just say, I forgive you. I forgive you. Fake it till you make it kind of thing. Yeah. And so I would do that and I would do that over and over. And then one day in this one instance, who was the main perpetrator, um, extended, extended family, um, it hit me. 
oh my gosh because because then he started smiling he gave me this as i was looking at him in my mind's eye he was smiling at me and i felt so much love from him so much love and i realized and i started remembering other lifetimes with him where we had i had asked him you know to hurt me in that lifetime I didn't heal it. So we had, so I asked him to, (laughs) to come back and, um, you know, I didn't heal that. That part of me is still fragmented. Can, can you come back with me in this lifetime and hurt me or kill me or whatever again? And I saw these lifetimes where he had done it, you know, where he was responsible for burning me at the stake as a witch, um, that he threw me to the lions and that kind of thing. And it was, that was the first one to balance the karmic thing, the karmic experience, because my mother and I had started do had done that in an, in another lifetime way back, and so the idea was to to balance that. Well, I got stuck, okay, and so I in the in between lifetimes I'd say, okay, well, I didn't heal that, so can you help me in another in these other lifetimes? So he kept. I realized in that moment in that epiphany, that profound moment there that he kept his vibration so low that he was, you know, a jerk, a bad guy for me. Yes. Yep. And it hit me. I don't, there's nothing here to forgive. I asked him to do this and he loved me so much that he agreed to do this because our, our souls are infinite. Yep he agreed to do this and so yeshua helped me with that agreement and so i tore up the agreement and you know in my mind and he helped me with that and so that agreement with with this with the perpetrator was um over and that not only released me it released him so that he can move on with his soul as well and you know do whatever he needs to do Cause I got the better end of the deal really, because he was a jerk. Right. Yeah. And so, um, so now that he, now he can move on and raise his frequency and, um, heal whatever he needs to heal without this contract, but it was something we agreed to, and he agreed to do that with me. So that was huge for me. Yeah, that's beautiful. I am so glad you brought this up because, um, you know, as a, as a therapist, I would tell people this, right? And and if let's say, for example, somebody who was sexually abused by someone, the answer was always like, oh, you're saying that I brought this up upon myself. And I'm like, well, when you make the contract up there, you somebody has to agree to be the rapist. Somebody has to agree to be the child molester. Somebody has to agree to be the bad guy. And they come because you requested that they come and that they do this so that you can learn a specific lesson. And it's so hard for people to get their heads around this. And so to hear you say it, it's, it's confirmation validation that yes, that, that as harsh as it sounds, it's how we learn compassion for the other who is us, we are them, they are us, they're, we're all one, you know, like, um, this is how we, we learn our lessons. And so, um, wow, just, Mm -hmm. just mind blown. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, I'm so grateful that you, you felt comfortable telling us this story because it's huge. It's huge. Um, for people to understand this, this huge lesson and the forgiveness, like some people are just not willing to even go there. Um, and forgiveness, yeah. it's huge. It is huge. It's, it's what keeps it, what keeps us coming back. If we haven't healed something and it's, it's always based on forgiveness, forgiving ourselves. If you know about Ho'oponopono yep. and, you know, and for not, not finding that, uh, that energy to be able to heal that part in us. And because we get, we get mired down in this, in this dense realm and we come from, you know, angelic realms and we just, we made that decision to come down to the, the, um, the trenches here. (laughs) So we can experience the, you know, the, um, 
the contrast. Yes. Because we're used to where everything's love and light and we're always of service. We're always helping everybody and everything like that. And we came down here to experience that because we are God expressing, right? And the guy yes. said, hey, you know, let's do both. How about if we if we um, work on and see what it's like to um, to have both sides of the coin, so to speak, where we feel pain, we feel trauma, and we feel this, and um, and just bring that into the whole. And then when we when that part of us is fragmented, as you know, being a, a therapist, then we since we are holographic, we repeat it until we do bring it into the whole, because that's what it's all about. Yeah, wow. when we're up there talking about when we're up there planning our lives, we're like we don't have that same perspective as we do down here because we're yeah. mired in it down here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what happened with you and your spiritual life? I know that, you know, you were specific way before and then you integrated the space and it sounds like as Jesus is helping you integrate so what's happening during this time? Well, uh, during that time, I, as I mentioned, I went through a dark night of the soul, a Kundalini awakening. I didn't understand it. Um, I was still holding on a job though, <laughs> believe it or not. But as these memories started coming up of my childhood, uh, I'd have to go into my room and, and also past lives. I'd have to go into my room and just process them. I, because, you know, when you're, holding on to to um uh trauma you don't you as a child most child disassociate yes which is what i did yeah and so the pain and all of that stuff has to come out somewhere somehow so that was coming up when, when i was in my room and i had to go through it now i was in a relationship which wasn't working out um my stepfather uh, died in 98 my mother passed uh, not long after that and then my biological dad passed. So I was dealing with a lot at that time. And um, it was a crazy time. It was not easy. Uh, yes, we'll call it a quickening, um, my quickening, where things were upside down for me, for sure. However, I wouldn't change it for the world because he was there with me. And so I had lots and lots of guides helping me. My bedroom was my classroom. I was, like I said, I was there every night at 9 p.m. for my meditations and my teachings. Um, wow. I started opening up my, and diving into my soul. And I started remembering who I was. And my psychic abilities started coming back because I was a psychic kid. Um, I could see dead people. I saw my grandfather when he passed and I'd see beings in my room. And I understood then those memories started coming of, um, extraterrestrial contact and things like that and um, beings in my room um, and I um, was guided to help people with my abilities once again I worked for a cor I worked in the corporate world yeah yeah and yeah well they're the one who need a lot of help <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I worked I with numbers there. I was yeah, I was um, a bookkeeper and I ended up um, being an HR and accounting manager and those types of things. And and I, so I was doing this part time and, and I was guided to help people in my um, with past life soul therapy, that type of thing, um, because I know because of how much it helped me tremendously in that yes. life. And so, yeah, and help people remember that we don't die. That's why I share my story is to help people remember that we don't die. And there's so much, we are so much more than we have been led to believe that we are. We're immense, powerful beings. And I've seen myself as an other aquatic beings in my out-of-body experiences as a more of a reptoid type of aquatic being and um, a blue being, <laughs> a big head, bald, female, gorgeous female being, a uh, green being. I've seen myself as a long-legged purple being i've seen myself as all kinds of different types of wow. beings yeah oh my god i'm so jealous <laughs> i would love to like all oh, that i would love to see myself as all my other pieces that i 
just don't seem to have access to. But um, wow, that's amazing. Because I'm sure that helps you kind of not take this life so seriously. Like, exactly. This is one of many that are out there doing something else, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, totally. Oh, wow. That that's was one of the first things he taught me is don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> and, it, you know, this is just basically um you know the matrix the illusion i saw the matrix in a grocery store i saw the grid <laughs> and i'm like what the heck and you know i didn't know anything about the matrix at the time oh it just really? the reality <clears throat> excuse me the reality around me disappeared it disappeared and all i could see were blue and green grid lines all around me yeah and i was going through a breakup with my partner at the time this is when i was um going through my quickening and no drugs no alcohol nothing like that i was just meditating like crazy i had stopped all of that <clears throat> and uh there i am in the grocery store and the matrix all of a sudden appears and it, it lasted for about three or four seconds which is long enough for for me to see it and know that i'm not seeing things and well you then, know i that's amazing that that is so powerful when we see the the pixels what i call because i i've seen yeah. the pixels i i did mushrooms the mushroom came to me through a friend yeah. I was like, okay yeah. let's do it and then when i right? did it and i saw the pixels i'm like oh my <laughs> god this is a video game you know like so it <laughs> helps it helps it really helps like change your life in a way like take risks like live life to the fullest like you know it takes just the seriousness out of life it's it's makes such a huge difference I love that yeah totally it really does that's amazing so now that you have I mean do you still like see Jesus every night do you do you still do this or oh yeah I'm, he I study with him all the time I um sit with him in meditation every day and connect with him. And he's with me all the time. I, you know, if I have anything I want to ask him, I ask him and he's there. I, uh, wow. of course he hasn't, he, he hasn't gone anywhere. He's with wow. me. He, he, he's, he's kept his end of the bargain. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, ever, did you ever quit your corporate job and, and you can say that I got fired. Oh, <laughs> I was quitting in my head. Yeah. You know, how things start happening. And you're like, oh, you know, I should just quit. I should just do my other thing, my other thing full time. Yeah. And, and then I get fired. Yeah. Well, we create our reality, right? So with the, yeah. the real, reality knows we don't want to be there anymore. It, it creates it for us. So, well, I always say that we fire ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So did you, are you doing that full-time now or did you end up doing it full-time? I, yes. And I, I started doing it. It was in 2017 that I got fired and I was doing it part-time and I was so busy that I'm like, I should just quit because things were just not going well at, at my corporate job. And, um, and, uh, that gave me the opportunity to really do it full-time and I was upset for maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> after I got fired <laughs> and I'm like okay well this is well kind of like duh yeah and I also started an academy I have a a uh, an a online account academy called the Kumara Academy of Transformation that I dedicate to Yeshua Sananda Kumara and um and I teach mes metaphysical classes and courses and so do I have other practitioners as well that um that are a part of the academy and we oh, do all kinds wow. of really cool stuff Mm -hmm. So what's the, what's the name of your website? So people can go check it out. Uh, my website, my personal website for my practice is Sharon Sananda.com. S H A R O N S A N A N D A.com. And the Academy website is Kumara K U M A R A Academy, A C A D E M Y.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay, beautiful. And tell us about your book. You're also writing a book. Yes, I've, it's already at the publisher. I finished my book, my first, well, my second now. I'm published twice, yay. Uh, but this book has taken me 10 years in the making, my personal book on um, my 
a fuller story of my NDE than what's in um, the the compilation book oh, and the aftermath and everything that Yeshua helped me with and the journey that I took with him, you know, kind of like the hero's journey, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, the personal hero's journey. So, so it's about that and it's a pretty wild ride and um, it was very healing for me to write that book. Again, it was 10 years in the making because I wasn't sure how to even put it out there because it's just so wild. But when I was contacted by Amira May for, to be a part of the compilation book, it lit a fire under me because I'd already started it and I've already you know, been working on it for 10 years. And uh, so she's helping me with it. She's publishing it with me and it'll be out June 21st is the publication date. Yeah. Oh, so wow. Really excited about that. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have your first NDE in there as well or no? Oh, they're both in there. They're mm -hmm. both in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The first one, I have a more um, extend the extended version of my NDE. Oh, okay. Okay. So what yeah. are you going to call your book? Do you have a title? We're still working on it. Okay. I have a bunch of titles that we're, you know, we're throwing around, but uh, we're still working on the title yet. Oh, still. okay. Okay. Um, wow. So yeah, I'd love to have you back when you have it and when you're launching it. Absolutely. Oh, I'd love to be on, on. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to chat with you more. Yeah. So it'll be after June 21st was, uh, is published. Published date is June 21st. And so already over there and they're editing and everything wow that's fantastic fantastic yeah. thank you thank you yeah yeah wow that's amazing i could talk to you for hours i swear but uh <laughs> i, I right? want to <laughs> keep this uh as short as i can um just for youtube purposes but um well thank you thank you thank you sharon i am so grateful um for your presence here and um for you you know giving us your story and um you know for all the knowledge that you shared with us no oh, well thank you for having me on it was my pleasure absolutely thank you so much and it was an honor to meet you you too thank you for you your too. work thank you thank you too all right everybody thank you for watching and please share if you think that this story can help others take care everybody See you next time.